Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Well, yesterday I shared with you an awesome tip for branding yourself at craft fairs and in your crafting in general. And today we are going to take that a step further and I'm going to show you the first of many on how I actually make that beautiful, beautiful bag. So you guys stay tuned. camera elevated so that I can show you guys the full beauty of this bag and I keep calling it a bag it's not a bag it's an actual paper purse paper tote this is not your average paper purse that you might see on YouTube this is a reinforced paper purse and I'm going to show you guys just how strong this is so I am going to put four water bottles in here and I want you guys to watch this because it's going to hold the strength of these filled water bottles. They are not empty. So I am going to raise up and you guys can see that this thing supports the weight of four water bottles without any sag at the bottom. Zero sag. This is a paper purse. You can carry this long after you get it at a craft fair. It is not a bag that you would give a gift in and expect it to be a one and done. This is reusable. My sister has one of my bags that she got recently. She's been carrying that bag every day. She carried it so much that people did ask her where she got it. She told them and then she came back to me with two orders for two bags. So just wanted to show you that let's not look at this as a paper bag paper bag is what you might get at the Dollar Tree this is not a paper bag this is a handbag this is a paper tote this can carry the weight of anything that you sell at the craft fair long after the fair is over so I just wanted to show you guys the strength of this and now we're going to make one of these but we're going to start out by making the smaller purses and then we're going to graduate up to this one so let's get started all right guys I'm gonna apologize in advance you're going to hear my air conditioner going because it is sweltering today and if I didn't turn that air conditioner on I would probably need to leave and not come back out for a while because it is so hot so you will hear it running in the background hopefully it won't be too distracting but a girl's got to stay cool so what I have are two pieces of my black and white cardstock and I have it cut at 8 by 12 and I am going to join the two pieces together and when I'm finished with this bag we'll have a purse that measures 6 by 5 and it will be 2 inches deep. So I'm starting here and then I'm going to bring in my chipboard. and I'm going to place my two inch piece down first. And what I did was I went ahead and scored this paper at one inch on both sides because this paper does have a tendency to want to crack if I don't pre-score it. So all I'm doing at this point is I am going to find my seam and make sure that I place my chipboard piece to where that seam is right in the middle. And then I'm gonna come back with, this is a two by six piece and I have a five by six piece right here. And I'm going to place it down just like this. And then I'll turn this around and I'm going to place it down on this side as well. And I'm using a little bit larger than an eighth of an inch because my paper is thicker and I don't want it to really warp or anything, so I'm using a little bit larger than I normally would. Then I'm going to come back and just remove some of this paper. And guys, as you start to make these paper purses, the more you make them, the better you'll become at it, 
and the faster you'll be able to make them. I can make my large paper purse in about 20 minutes. It does not take that much time at all. So then all I'm going to do is fold this on my edges, just like this. And then I'm going to come back with my scissors and just miter my edges. And this is one of those times when you don't have to be too precise because we're going to put a topper on this. So I'm just going to miter, miter, miter. So I'll come back with my tape. I'm going to place it down just like this. And I'll come back. And I'll do this on all four sides. So I remove the tape and all I'm going to do is just fold over my edges and get them stuck down on all four sides. All right guys, so my sides are folded over and you can see that I have the beginning of a really cute little purse. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and place my feet on the bottom. And for this purse, what I'm going to use are my thumbtacks. And they make really cute little feet on the smaller purses. So all I'm doing is punching a hole end to end and then I'll place the thumbtacks. And I'm using silver thumbtacks on this because my um, handle chain will be silver as well. So all I'm doing is putting a thumbtack in just like that. And I'm putting some in right there. And I am going to bend this in just a little, not too much because I don't wanna break it. So I'll bend it in and I'm gonna come back with my hammer and make a little noise while I get that stuck down. And you can see how cute that is on the bottom. So we'll do the other side as well. Again, I'll come back with my pliers, grab my thumbtack and just bend it a little bit. And then bend this. And I'll take my hammer. And we have cute little feet on our bag. It's that simple. So now when the bag is resting, the bottom of it won't sit on the floor because it's paper and it might touch water. This won't touch water because you've got the elevation of the thumbtacks on the bottom. So at this point on a project, ordinarily you would see me put down my liner piece. And I'm not going to do that because I'm going to attach my side pieces and I want to make sure that the mechanics of the side piece are hidden by the liner and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So we need to start with our scoreboard and we're going to need a piece that measures three and one quarter by five and a half. And on the three and one quarter inch side, we're going to score this at half an inch. We'll rotate it and score it at half an inch. Rotate it again and score the other long side at half an inch and then we're gonna rotate it clockwise back to the five and a half inch side and we're gonna score it at four and three quarters. And now we can put our scoreboard away because we don't need it anymore. And what I'm going to do is the side that we scored at four and three quarters, I am going to glue that down. And for those of you who haven't been watching a lot of my videos, when I glue, I like to make sure that the glue is actually seeping out because then I know I've got great coverage and I've got a good stick. So that's just me. Some of you may choose to do it differently, but that is how I like to do it. And now I'm going to take this and just fold on my score lines. I'm not going to do any burnishing. I'm just going to fold them so that I can get them into shape. And now what I'll do is I'll come back and I'm simply going to remove the bottom pieces. These little bottom corners here. And 
and I'll be left with that. And then I forgot one other thing. Let me go back real quick. Let's put this back in on the three and one quarter inch side. And I am going to score this at one and a half. And that's just going to make it easier for the bag to fold on the sides. And you don't have to do it because it will naturally do it, but I just do that so that it will actually fold in like this. And now I'll come back with my bag and I am going to take this and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to place it down right on my bottom piece so that when I glue it down it looks like this on the inside but it's butted up at the bottom just like that. So I am going to use hot glue for this and you'll kind of see what I mean in just a minute. So I'm generous with my glue and I am going to take this and place it down and then I'll turn it over so I can kind of see if I'm in the middle and when I think I am that's when I'll start pressing my glue down to get this nice and stuck. And now you can see what I mean by I'm joining this piece to this piece. And then when I raise it up, it looks like that. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to take my glue, put it down. And then I'm going to look at it to make sure I've got it positioned nice and even. And then I'll stick it down and now I can start putting this together so all I'm going to do is use hot glue and I'm going to run a bead of glue along the side and then I will join that side to that piece just like that so let's go ahead and place our glue and my glue is very hot and then I'm going to get it stuck down just like this and then I'll come back in on the inside and just get my glue nice and flattened out because I don't want it humpy. And now you can see why I place my liner piece last because I don't like the way that this looks. If I place my liner piece down right now, this would show and to me, I don't like that. Um, that's just me. If you want to place your liner piece, if it's easier for you, go ahead and place your liner piece before you put your side pieces on. But for me, um, I just prefer a more finished look. So then the next thing that we need to do is we place this one down here. So we need to just move over and place this one like that. It's easier when you work on the same side to get your hand in and get this stuck down. So all I'm doing is placing this hot glue and it's really hot. Try not to touch it. And I'm going to get this stuck down just like that. And I have just a second or two to move it around if I don't have my placement right. And then I'll come back with my um, bone folder and get everything nice and smoothed out. Now what I'm left with here kind of looks like a cake box. And I am going to do these one at a time as well. So I'm going to place my glue just like I did on the other side. And then I'll bring this up just like that. And I'll move it over and I'll come in on the inside and get my glue nice and stuck. And you can see just how pretty that is. Gorgeous. So let's do the other side. And the last side is always tricky because you've got to try to get enough glue in there so that when you start putting it together, you can squeeze some of the glue down. So the way that I do it is I simply stand it up and I place my glue like this on my last one. And then the glue wants to drip downward anyway. So then I'll take it and put it down and then I'll come back on the inside and I'm going to get this smoothed out. And guys, our bag is mostly done. So you can see how 
it looks on the inside with that red showing. I just don't like that, but that's just me. I'm picky like that. Okay, so now what I want to do is I do want to go ahead and place my interior pieces. So I decided I would go with this beautiful little um, plaid print for this one. And one of the things that I like to do for my bags is the outsides will always look the same, but the way that I make them different is I use different papers on the inside. So what I have here are two pieces that measure four and a half by five and seven eighths. And all I'm going to do is I am going to take my glue and use glue to stick this down on the inside. It makes it a whole lot easier when you use the glue for this and not tape because you have some wiggle room. So I'm going to get this glued up very well. And then I'll pick it up. And I am going to just slide it in all the way down to the bottom because I want it to meet the bottom. Just like that. So it's all the way at the bottom. And then I'll come back in with my paper towel first and get it stuck down so my glue is touching. And then I'll come back in with my bone folder and just really spread that glue out. And isn't that beautiful on the inside? And don't worry about anything being uneven because we have a topper that we'll be putting on here and it'll cover any of those imperfections. I hope you guys are liking this. It's a great way to start creating your brand and I would encourage you if you decide that you want to create a brand or a pattern that's exclusively for you, find a paper that you really like. Don't just settle for the black and white because that's what you see me using. Um, find something that really speaks to you and use that for branding purposes and anything that you might be trying to sell or when you give a gift, make that your standard. And there are a lot of beautiful papers out there that you can certainly, certainly find to create and develop a brand. Because the one thing you don't want is everyone to do black and white stripes and then you go to a craft fair and guess what, you've got some black and white bags, but so does the table that's three tables down from you and so does the table that's five tables down from you. And then you're competing with someone else because they've got the same type of bag that you chose to market. So find paper that works for you. Find some beautiful paper and then dress it up and make that your brand. Okay, so now what I want to do is I am going to go ahead and place my bottom piece in. So I have a piece that measures two by six and I might have to cut it down, but it's chipboard and I like to stabilize the bottom of my box. I am going to take my glue because I already have a piece of chipboard in the bottom, so placing this on top of it is only going to make it stronger, and that's why you're able to put water bottles and heavier things in this, because not only do we reinforce the bottom, but we make some super strong handles. So let's go ahead and put this in. Get that nice and stuck down. Let me come back and get this nice and stuck. Come in with my bone folder and just work that in so that it's nice and stuck and you can see just how pretty that looks on the inside it's kind of dark but guys it's stunning it looks great so there we've got our bag portion completed and now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and place my toppers all right guys for my toppers I have two pieces that measure two and a half by six and I have folded them in half and I am going to use glue to put these down. Very easy. So just like this, I'll put this down. Get it matched up on the ends and get it stuck down. And I'll come in with my bone folder and just smooth everything out so that everything is nice and tight and flat. And then I'll come across the top and just kind of square that down. I'm gonna hold my hand here 
and get that nice and stuck. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch. Here's our beautiful bag so far, and we are about to make it even more beautiful by putting the handles on. And here's how I make my handles. I love to use key ring chains as my handles. I think that it just adds a certain charm. And then on the side, I've got these beautiful little thumbtacks on adding that extra piece of metal accessory. So I'm gonna show you how I make these. And, and the way that I make these helps to make the bag very sturdy and able to carry significant weight. So we are going to start with the piece that measures 10 by one and a half. And I don't even measure, I simply start folding and I'm gonna fold this into thirds. So I'll come back with my bone folder here. And then I'm going to bring this one in because I want to make sure that when I start folding, it's going to be the same width as this one. So then I'll take it and just kind of wrap it like that. And now I know that I'm going to have two handles that are the same width or fairly close to being the same width. There might be a little slight variation, but nothing that will be noticeable. So then I'll get this smooth out and then I will come back in with my glue. And y'all know I'm using reptile glue because that's my favorite, favorite glue. And I'm just going to get this nice and stuck down. Come in with my paper towel and I'm just gonna rub across this a couple of times and get it stuck, or at least get it starting to stick. And then I'll come back and I'll do the other side and I'm just gonna fold it on top of this one and then I'll really work my glue in on both pieces. So just like that, I have got the makings of my handle. And I'm gonna bring my bone folder in, get my glue oozing, because I know then that I have got a very nice stick. And then I like to take this and run it along the edge of my desk to kind of get it rounded. You can also take your bone folder and just start to get a natural curve to this but I like to do it on my desk because I think it just makes it smoother. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna bring these in. These are key ring chains that I get from Amazon and I will link these below. You get several different sizes in here and all I do is I take the larger size is, well it's the medium size in this pack, but it's the larger size for this project. I am using two sizes. I'm using a small and then a larger. And the larger size is what I'm going to feed through the holes on, on the bag part. So you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I am going to take this, and you can see it right here. This is my smaller part. This is my larger part. And the smaller part is what I'm going to feed this through. So I'm just going to get it going through just like that. And then I'll fold it over just like this. And I'm going to come back with some hot glue. And I am going to place hot glue on this. And then I'll get it stuck down. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. So laid out, you can see, big, small and it's the small side that I want. So I am going to take this and feed it through, and then I'm going to bring this one back in because I want to make sure that they're going to be the same length. So now I can take this, and I'm gonna fold this over, and then I'm gonna lay them out again just to make sure that they are both the same length, and they are, they're pretty close and I'll come back with my glue and I'm gonna place my glue on this piece right here, that piece, and then I'll just fold it over just like that. And just like that, we've got a handle. 
And then the final thing that I do just to secure this and make it more stable is I'm going to come back with my thumbtack and I'll just press it through just like this and that gives you a nice little finished look and then I'll take my pliers and I'm just going to very gently start bending it. I don't want to break the thumbtack and then once it's curved like that, hopefully you can see that then I am going to take my pliers and just drive that curved pointy end into the paper so I don't have to worry about anybody getting stuck and then I'll do the same thing with the other one I am going to come back with my thumbtack and press it through I've got to go through the glue on this one, really deep glue. And then I'll take my pliers here and very gently curve that until it looks like that. And then I'll come back and just squeeze the point down into the paper and that way no one gets stuck by this. So there we've got two handles. And now I'm going to put them on. And then I'm going to work my fingers down inside of the key ring and get it down in the hole. And then, I'll, and then I'll take this one and I'll work my fingers down inside of the hole. And I'll just start, or I'll work my fingers down inside of the key ring. And then I'll get that hole opened up and I'll stick it inside of the hole on my bag and just start working it around until it goes through the bag, through the hole on the bag. And as you can see, I've got a very beautiful, beautiful handle on here. Now let's do the other side. So all I'll do is I'll come back and I'm going to try to match up my holes as best I can. So I know I want my holes close to the top so that I can feed my chain through. And even though you're going close to the top, make sure you are punching through chipboard. Otherwise, your bag will not be as stable. So I am just eyeballing this. And I'll punch my hole. And now I'll put my other handle through. And again, I'll come through just like this. And I'll take that key ring and just feed it through that hole just like that and there we've got one and now I'll do the other one I'm going to feed it through the hole again and there guys we have got a beautiful beautiful little designer bag and I'm not finished because I want to take one of my cards and put it on here and these are business cards that I ordered before I actually ever did YouTube and then when I decided I would do YouTube I wanted that on the card on the back side so I had to order some more cards and that's why I have this marked bag so that I know I can use this as branding on my projects so all I'm going to do is take some glue and get this stuck down. And I'll come back, make sure that's nice and straight. And I only put it on one side of the bag. in with my bone folder and just make sure I've got everything all smoothed out. And I'm going to come back and just pick up our adorable little bag. And guys, this is truly a little statement maker. And this bag is also sturdy enough to carry bottled water. I can probably fit two bottled waters in here and I can. And this bag will support the weight 
of two bottled waters without any buckling on the bottom. It is that sturdy. So this, my friends, is truly, truly a functional paper purse. This is not just a bag. It is a functional paper purse. Guys, look at how cute that is. It is just so stinking adorable. And then I'm gonna bring in Big Sister so you guys can see just how cute these are. So when you're working on your brand, think about things like this. You know, how do you want to present the gifts that you're going to give to people? How do you want them to look? What message do you want to send? And I'll tell you the message that I want to send. When I do anything, I want my message to be class, I want it to be quality, and I want it to be posh and next level. And I think that with this type of branding, that's exactly what I have achieved. So I hope that this has helped you guys see how quick and easy it is to make one of these gorgeous little paper purses. And then we're going to make um, another one in a few days and it'll be a larger size and then we'll work our way up to this big boy. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this project. If you have, please hit the like button. And if you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join the online crafting family. Y'all have a great day. Happy crafting and we'll chat later. Bye.